What's going on guys? All right, I have in my hand right here what I believe to be the best EDC setup that there is on the market today. Um, this is kind of a hodgepodge of parts that I put together. I um, mean, it is safe. Uh, these are all uh, P365 parts, but let me go ahead and show you this. This is my SIG P365 MUT. We're gonna call it a MUT because that's kind of what it is. Uh, we're gonna go over everything on it. There is one thing I do wish I could change on this. Um, I can, but I can't keep it as compact. The way I have it set up right now, um, it is very, very short. It does not get down, you know, deep into your abdomen groin area or anything like that. It stays high enough that it's not really annoying. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. It's this TLR6. I have a TLR7 sub I can put on this, but it sticks way far past the barrel and it extends the gun down probably about 19, uh, Glock 19-ish length. And uh, I wouldn't want it that long. I like it as compact as it is right here. Um, but let's go over this a little bit. So you have a Holison 507K optic. I would prefer to have the fully enclosed one and I may buy that one eventually one day, but for right now, uh, this is what's on it and it's working. And uh, I've just not changed it yet. I do run the night vision optic height sights. A lot of people don't run these sights when running these um, optics because you do have like an optics channel right here on the back if you see right here. Uh, but for me, um, I do prefer to have a little bit taller sight. I've got used to that over the years. So I did put a uh, night vision optic height sight. I do have a Zev slide, um, which was already pre-cut for this optic. So I just ordered that slide instead of sending my optic off. I liked how this slide looked. I liked how it was milled. And all the internals on the slide are SIG, you know, factory OEM parts. This is a SIG um, custom fire control unit. All right, <clears throat> in my opinion, this is the best fire control unit for the P365. I've used well, I own almost all variants of this. I mean, there's just, I own like five or six P365s and I've got to use most of the triggers that come in these. And I don't like the goldish looking color of this trigger. I guess it's supposed to be FDE, but it's really not. Um, but I do think this is a better fire control unit than just the stock ones. This is a Wilson Combat XL, P365 XL grip module. I did sandpaper this side. Now this is just me. You can call me a wuss if you want to. But to me, the Wilson Combat back here was really, really aggressive. The stippling was aggressive. I like that for my hand. I do not mind it on my hand. You'll see here in a minute, I even left some. But when I carried appendix, I don't have an undershirt and it would rub the side of my stomach just raw. So what I did was I basically come right down the center of this and on the side that was against my stomach, I sanded it. The side that wasn't, I left it so I could get that good grip um, when I presented the pistol. I did the same thing on the front. I come down the middle, this side I sanded, this side I did not. And now it does not rub me uh, whenever I carry it. Now, I will say this about the TLR6. The reason I don't like it, I don't care about the laser. I don't carry lasers a lot, um, but 100 lumens is just no light. We're way past that. If, you know, O light can make a little bitty bitty light with like three or 400 lumens. Streamlight should very well be able to put three or 400 lumens in this. And you know, if I can get close to 500 lumens on a pistol light of this size, I'm really happy, but a hundred is horrible. And I know why they don't do it. They've got the TLR seven lineup and it's got 500 lumens. And a lot of people flock to that. And it is a more durable uh, light because you can see right there, my lens is actually cracked and I've never dropped this. I guess it just cracked over recoil and maybe the batteries limit kind of what you can run on it. But again, Olight makes a little, little bitty light that is actually brighter than these. But one thing I do like about this, as you can see, I did stipple that side, I stippled that side and I stippled underneath. So what that allows me to do is when I index the gun, that gives me an index point on my thumb and my support hand underneath and it gives me a little bit more grip on that. And I do like that because the way that is rounded right there, my hand just kind of indexes straight into it. My thumb indexes the side and it gets a really, really, really good grip on the pistol. Again, this thing is so small and compact that you just kind of forget it's on you. And it does have, like I said, the XL grip. So it does hold a 12 round magazine flush fit, which is perfectly fine. Cause even when I ran just the regular P365 stock grip, 
Um, I run an extended 12 rounder, you know, like the regular 12 rounders for the regular 365, the standard ones. And it was basically the same length. Now the holster, this is where the downside comes in. This is the holster I run. It is a Tuxton Tactical holster, and I do not believe he will ever make another one of these again because I have tried and tried and tried to get him to make me some more of these, and uh, he, he says they're kind of hard to do. But um, this is the best holster I've ever used in my life, and if you don't believe I've used it a lot, it has no, no multi-cam on the back, and a lot of it on the front is even wore off. I do carry a spare 12-round magazine, and... Uh, this is just the best holster ever. The way that the shock cord right here allows it to bend around your body. And now there's other companies that do this. If you want this kind of holster, there's other companies that actually make this shock cord um, holster right here. So you can find these. Um, I have this one already. And another reason it doesn't hang down because it doesn't have that TLR7. So everything's just kind of flush all the way across it. And if I put the gun in the holster, if I can get back out of this little pouch, you can see it's almost flush across the top with this beaver tail. So it, it really feels like it's just level against your skin. It doesn't feel like it's off any or anything like that. And it's just really, really comfortable to carry. Again, you can get a full grip on the gun, a full purchase when you bring it out. And when you, it's just very pointable. All 365s, 320s, which I don't advocate carrying a 320. I'm a little shaky. I've, I've shot about 60, 70 rounds of shotgun, 12 gauge a day. So I'm a little bit shaky. Uh, but uh, when you present it, it uh, presents really, really well. Uh, let's put a few rounds through this. I have put probably a thousand rounds through these guns. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing too. This is a factory SIG barrel. I just took the factory SIG barrel. I used to have a Zev barrel and I still have it at the house, but it got some weird wear on it. It was wearing down the sides. Like most barrels will wear right here on the top. How hey, you see this one? But the, the Zev barrel was wearing on both sides and it was like getting like really bright silver. Like it was like really shaving some metal off of it. And I didn't like that and I didn't trust it. Um, so I just went back with a stock SIG barrel. You can see right here, it just says SIG Sour on the side. Get some wear on it there. Cause like I said, we're, we're getting over a thousand rounds through this little gun here. I've got a lot of trigger time behind 365s uh, because that's what I carry every day. Uh, but I just really, really, really love this little pistol. Enough talking, let's get to shooting. All right, guys, before we get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Underwood Ammo for sending the ammo for this video. You can see right here, this is their nine millimeter plus uh, 90 grain extreme defender. It runs 1,475 feet a second. And look at that little bullet right there, hot little bullet. And again, I wanna thank Underwood Ammo for sending this out uh, for the video. And uh, let's get to shooting. All right, guys, again, I'm not gonna put a ton of rounds through this gun. I put a lot of rounds through this gun. Like I said, almost a thousand rounds. The gun just runs, it runs, it runs. It has no hiccups at all. I've never had a malfunction out of this little gun in any configuration I've ever had it in. And uh, this to me is the best EDC setup I've ever seen. It's accurate. I was shooting a little fast there. I'm still kept it inside an eight inch circle. Ever shot uh, two or three of them hit the bullseye. Um, it's just comfortable to shoot. The recoil is very manageable. And uh, it's just, like I said, very, very comfortable. Again, you can see the flush fit 12 round magazine. Uh, it doesn't stick out any. So when you're carrying this concealed, um, it's easily concealable as well. And it just melts away in your waistband and uh, nobody will even know you've got it on you. Um, all right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know if you think this is the possibly the best EDC setup that's ever been on the market. Um, to me, it is. It just feels great. The trigger is amazing in this. Let's take a look at that trigger real quick before we leave. I've showed y'all this before. A little bit of take up, but it's real smooth. You hit that wall, a little creep, then it breaks. Reset. Right there. It's a little bit long. It's not crazy, crazy long. The trigger is very smooth though. I mean, it's just very, very smooth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit longer than some of my other guns, especially like staccato and stuff like that. 
And you're gonna say, hey, staccato is way more expensive than it is. Uh, but if you're wanting good triggers, guns like that have really, really good triggers. And if you've got one, you can compare this to it and kind of see where you're at. But again, I do still believe that this is the best setup for a SIG P365. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, do you run a 365? Do you run a 43X? Uh, do you run a high point? I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comment what you think the best setup is, or if you think that you may want to build one of these yourself. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. We'll see you next time.